Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Torkakis. On the menu today, we have Italian style turkey burgers, tomato and corn salsa, and for dessert, we have fruit s'mores. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do here today is melt chocolate. As if we haven't, we've melted a lot of chocolate on this show, so you probably know the routine. But anyways, um, I have in here some milk. I have um, a quarter cup of milk that I'm going to use to melt the chocolate in, and four ounces of chocolate is the kind of consistency that I want. For we, what we're going to do here, the first thing is we're doing is we're starting with dessert and the, the fruit s'mores. So the first thing we need is the melted chocolate that we're gonna spread on the, on the uh, graham crackers. And then we're gonna put some fruit on that and it'll be even better than your traditional um, s'mores with the, with the um, marshmallow. This will definitely be healthier. As soon as I get this chocolate in here, there we go. So I chopped the chocolate up really fine so it shouldn't take long to melt. So this is melting nicely here. I'm just going to put it back here in the hot water for just a little bit. We got it, perfect. Just going to let that sit there for a second, clean this up. So we have our chocolate here and I'm going to get the graham crackers. And I'm going to put it, uh, put it on a piece of uh, wax paper. Before I do that, so I'm going to uh, chop up some walnuts. Because that's going to be a little secret ingredient that no one will know is in there until they bite into it. So after we spread the chocolate on the graham cracker, we are going to sprinkle it with some walnuts. And they really give it such a, I, just the, the whole texture and um, flavor of the walnuts just gives it a, a real kick. I'm going to chop these really fine. And you want about a quarter cup. So here I have my graham crackers that I'm going to break in half. Well, that didn't come up too even, but that's okay. If I do it this way, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna line them up. And watch how nicely this goes on. Beautiful um, thin texture. So it's just thin enough that it spreads without me having to do it, um, you know, to do it, spreading it, but it's, it's still thick enough that it doesn't run all over the place. And I like to, um, you know, put chocolate on both, both sides. There we go. And then I'm going to sprinkle the chocolate. Excuse me, I'm going to sprinkle the walnuts. Not too, too many, but enough. Okay, so then I'm going to put those on a flat surface. I just happen to have another cutting board here. I'm going to put them on here. Because we, uh, once they come to sort of room temperature, we're going to put them in the refrigerator. I missed one. There we go. All right, so those are going to sit there for a little bit while I work on, while I work on the um, filling, which is the fruit. And the fruit I'm going to use is bananas. So what I'm going to do to the bananas is um, sort of just gently cook them. Gently, not too much. All right, so I'm going to cook them in a little bit of honey, um, sort of laced with a little bit of vanilla. I need about a quarter cup of honey. Not quite, a scanned quarter cup. These are really quick to make. And I'm going to put a, about half a teaspoon of vanilla, just to give it a little flavor. There we go. 
So you don't really want to taste it. You just kind of want to know that there's a flavor there that just gives it a certain kick. So while that heats up, I'm going to cut up the bananas. Um, you want ripe bananas, uh, not too, too ripe. But like these are great. We got these at um, Calories of Farm Stand and Garden Center. They have great stuff. Also picked up the tomatoes and many of the other in produce ingredients that we use here, including the eggs. They end up there, every time I go there, they have more and more stuff, which is good. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these in thirds. Cut these in half. And I usually uh, cook them about one minute per side. There we go. Need a bigger spoon. Perfect. Put the pieces in. It doesn't matter which side you put in first, the flat or the oval side. So they go in for about a minute. Medium heat. A minute on each side. There we go. So while those cooks, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. Okay, so let's see, one, more, one minute on one side, one minute on the other. So once these cook, you will um, cool them a little bit. And you can tell pretty much when they're done, there's not much honey left over. And of course, the size of the pan that you use makes a difference as well. This is just about right. I could have gone from with the pan that was a smidgen smaller, but this works fine. All right, so I think these are done. So I'm gonna take them off, put them on a plate. So if I do it this way, I think they'll slide off nicely. If you happen to have a really ripe banana that doesn't uh, that you think might not, hold, might not hold up as well with being poured this way, then you can certainly take it out one at a time. So here they are. Now, you don't want to put these in the refrigerator immediately either because they're hot. So you don't want to put hot food in the refrigerator. You at least want to wait till it comes to room temperature. And that's true with any food. So because here we have a timing thing. Um, I already have some already made. So these I'm going to assemble. So this is the fun part. So you get half. I cut these in half here. Put it right there. Then you put another piece on top and you squish it just gently. Now remember these have gotten just a little, uh, the graham crackers are somewhat moistened so they're not going to break as easily. Aren't these pretty? And definitely healthier than the marshmallows. And I'm just going to put some um, pieces on the side here. There we go. And it looks like these might benefit from a little drizzle of chocolate. So I'm going to do it with the fork. Just a drizzle, just to give it a little color on top. A 
little over here. There. Isn't that pretty? Put these here. So the next thing I'm going to be making is the tomato and corn salsa. I'm going to get my bowl. And for that, I'm going to need um, two tomatoes, but these are not that big, so I'm going to use three. And I need a lime. I need some parsley that's right here. I need an onion, some oil. I'm going to get all my ingredients ready, and some salt and pepper that we can um, do later. So I'm going to cut these in half. Oh, take the little tag off. Okay. Make sure there's no tags on here. There. Now take a spoon to help me to um, help me take the seeds out. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing it, um, just going in and popping up the seed, the little pockets here that you see. There we go. There, last one. Now, I'm going to dice these really, um, dice size about half an inch or so. The best way to do it is cut it in cut them cut the tomato in strips first. Actually, no, I might do that for all of them. It's easy to do one task at a time rather than going back and forth. So I'm gonna cut them in strips first. And this would be really great with tomatoes from the garden too. That last one. There. So the other thing that we need is about half a cup of um, red onions. I find that if I keep my onions in the refrigerator when they're cold, that you don't tear up. I do them really quick. Oh, I think I did it without tearing up. You gotta work really fast. There. So the onions are done and we are going to add a little bit of uh, lime juice on this, about two tablespoons. And if, as you know, if you roll it around, it helps with um, releasing more juices. So I like to use a fork. I think you've seen me do that before because I think it helps with um, breaking up some of the filaments in here about two tablespoons. I usually just do the whole thing. But if you were measuring, you do two tablespoons. Okay, then I need to get these onions in there. Then I need about half, a quarter cup of diced, oh, chopped parsley. And I'm gonna chop the parsley. I need about a quarter cup, so this looks like it'll do. Remember, it doesn't have to be exact. And if you wanted to use uh, cilantro, if you like that better, you could. I'm one of those people that um, 
doesn't really care for cilantro. So we're going to give this a chop. So that goes in. And to this, I'm going to add just a drizzle of oil, so probably about, I'd say, a tablespoon. See how quickly this comes together? So that's about a tablespoon. And then I'm going to obviously add some salt and pepper. About half a teaspoon of salt. Well, I might have to do it this way. My typical measure. Get a better feel that way by doing it by hand. And then a good shake of pepper, about an eighth of a teaspoon, which is about half of a quarter of a teaspoon. And give that all a nice toss. Doesn't that look pretty? The onions and the tomato and the parsley. There we go, we give this one final good toss, and then we are going to add the, the corn. Now this is uh, already cooked. Uh, I use the, the, um, the frozen corn that I've pre cooked already. Just follow the package in in directions. So there's a cup of corn in here, hence the tomato and corn salsa. There we go, isn't that pretty with the yellow? Perfect, it's sort of unexpected. So there we go. So now we've done with the tomato corn salsa. We are going to start working on the tur Italian style turkey burgers. I need a pan and turkey. So here I have the uh, ground turkey. I have ground turkey breast. So you want to make sure when you do buy uh, the turkey, the ground turkey, that you know the difference, this two different kinds, there's two different kinds out there. You can get the just ground turkey or ground turkey breast. I prefer the breast because it's just the breast meat. If it says just plain ground turkey, it could be any part of the turkey. So here I have a pound and What makes these Italian is that I pretty much use the same uh, ingredients that I use when I make my Italian meatballs, which is one little difference. So I add about, um, put in one egg. And I add, um, Let's see, I'm going to add a little bit of oil in here, which I don't typically add in the ground when I make, you know, meat, regular meatballs, but here, because the meat is so um, lean, you kind of need a little moisture in it. So about a tablespoon of olive oil. And I use about a quarter of a cup of um, breadcrumbs. And I'm also going to use um, some um, parsley that I'm going to chop. So you want to finely chop the parsley in this recipe. You don't want to eat a big piece of parsley. Now, one other ingredient ingredient that I don't use um, in my Italian meatballs is, but I'm going to use here is um, dill. I just find that it just gives this uh, the turkey burgers sort of a nice aroma when you bite into it. 
So that's the real secret ingredient here. All right, so there's about two tablespoons in here. And of course, some salt and pepper that I probably put away. There we go. This I'm going to shake out. I'm not going to add too, too much salt in here because one of the other ingredients that I'm going to be using later on is Worcestershire sauce, and there's plenty of salt in that. And we should all be consuming a little bit, uh, as little salt as possible, let me put it that way. So I'm going to mix this really quick. Um, if you want to, you can um, give that egg a slight beaten before uh, putting it in with the mixture. Now one of the things um, about when you're making meatballs or turkey burgers or anytime you're working with ground beef is that you don't want to overwork it because then it makes it really thick, dense um, pr product. So I like to do it with the fork, for just until everything is, um, you know, uh, it's homogeneous. There, that's enough. So now I'm going to heat up my pan. I'm going to put about a tablespoon or two of oil. You can do these on the grill as well. But we're going to do it in the pan. If you have one of those grill pans, you can use that too. Or you can use the grill outside if you're grilling. So this looks like it's heating up. I like all my turkey burgers to be pretty much a homogeneous size, so I'm pretty much the, the same size. So what I like to do is use a, use a measuring a cup. And I like to use a quarter cup measuring cup. And when I do this, I get about six, six to eight uh, burgers. And then I, don't, I can just um, pat them down to about half inch thickness. If you want to use half a cup measuring uh, cup, you can. Like I said, I like them to be sort of not too big. All right, so I'm just going to cook four for now. There we go. And you want to cook them about five, four to five minutes per side. I have a spatula, so I'm going to turn these over. Oh, you know what I was forgetting to do? So here I'm going to pour about a quarter of a cup of Worcestershire sauce. If you cook, you, you know how sometimes you just forget one little step. So what I'm doing here, this is actually going to help um, brown a little better as well, although it's doing a good job. There we go. And it'll just give that extra flavor. You can't quite put your finger, your, you know, you can't quite figure out when you're eating it, but there's that extra layer of flavor. Oh, these are beautifully brown. Oops. So I'm going to do this side as well. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm going to turn on this other I'm going to add a little bit of oil to this. I'm going to, I'm going to heat up the uh, English muffin in that, in that pan. So if you have a grill, you can certainly grill them, you can toast them, or you can do them in the, um, in the pan like we're doing here. So these look like they're done. I'm going to turn these off. 
Let them sit for a little bit. Just to heat the, the English muffin up. Okay, so let's see how these did. So you want to make sure that your turkey burgers are cooked to about 165 degrees uh, internal temperature. So I'm just going to poke them and see. Yeah, they look like they're about done. All right. Okay, let's see how these are coming along. I think this is good because you just want to soften them up. There we go. And let's see, this is ready. If you like them a little more brown, you can certainly leave them in for longer. There we have them. And then we just plate them. Actually, I'm just going to leave them like this, but you get the idea. Look how pretty they look. Actually, what I'm going to do is put a spoonful of the corn, the, of the corn tomato salsa that we've made on top of each one. Or you could just serve it as a side as well. So I'm going to do both. Just a little extra flavor on here. One more thing, it's always a good idea to garnish your plate with Something. So we're going to put some parsley here just to give it a little bit more look of freshness. And also because what it's, parsley is one of the ingredients that we've used. There we have it. This is a great alternative to um, your typical, tur uh, typical uh, ground beef burger. So we have turkey burgers today. Uh, and as a side, we have the tomato corn salsa and followed for dessert by awesome, awesome uh, s'mores with the tr without the traditional marshmallow, but we're using really healthy and nutritious bananas that go in it that have been cooked in a little bit of honey just to give it another uh, layer of flavor. So we've got delicious, uh, a delicious cookout menu here. Um, that's healthy, delicious, and good for you. And I want to thank Colorizo Farm Stand and Garden Center for the produce that they provided us with. And I want to thank you for joining us today and do it again soon. Thank you. I'm Anna Torcakis, and this is Delicious Simplicity. Bye-bye.